to St Peter and St Paul this morning and to those of you at home as well. I still get excited about the fact that I'm in people's living rooms and whatever. I was visiting someone on Friday and said, actually, I'll be back with you on Sunday here, but in a different form, which is really quite good. But you're very welcome. And particularly if you're visiting or you're new, then do make yourselves known. There are some welcome cards in the foyer and these are available online as well. And if you are seeking please do speak to someone after the service. If you were listening to that pre-service song, the good Lord is the way, the truth, the life, it says. And my welcome to you this morning is only an introduction and so much more, to a so much more important welcome from the Lord himself. For those that don't know me, I'm Sally Musson, a licensed lay minister in this parish, and Felicity will be opening God's word to us later. And children, you have an activity sheet, so if you haven't got one, please do wave a hand and somebody will bring you one from the back. So let's quieten our hearts and minds now as we come into God's presence as God's family and then we'll share our call to worship together. So let's say together our opening prayer and the words are on the screen.
Loving God, we have come to work. So in a moment, we're going to go over to our together time, after which do please stand for the song that follows. So together time. Good morning, everybody. Now, before we start, uh, I have to apologise. Last week, I said that together time would be short, and maybe it was by about 30 seconds. So apologies that it may not have been as short as you were expecting, but hopefully, it felt short enough to you. Now, it's said that it is better to give than to receive. But I wonder, do you think it is better to give or receive bad news? The reason that I ask that is today we're having a think about someone who, unfortunately, had to give quite a lot of bad news but they also gave a lot of good news too. And here are some clues to help you try and work out who it is that we're thinking about today. He was known as the weeping prophet. His friends may have called him Jerry. So, hopefully, you may have guessed that it's a he, he's a prophet, he could have been called Jerry, it is Jeremiah. But before we have a think about Jeremiah and we hear the story about him today, we need to kind of go back a bit and have a recap of some of the things that we have already looked at in Together Time over the last few weeks. Last week, we talked about King Josiah. And Jeremiah began his time as a prophet during King Josiah's reign. But Jeremiah outlasted Josiah. He was a prophet for about 40 years. And one of the main things that he talked about was the fact that God's people were going to be going into a thing called exile. An army from a nation that hated the Israelites, the Babylonians, were going to come and they were going to take over God's land and people and even take some of them off away into a foreign country. Lots of people didn't believe Jeremiah, but that is exactly what happened. Now, our story today takes place while Jeremiah is somewhere that isn't a great place to be. I won't tell you where. Maybe you can have a guess, but you will find out in our story. God told Jeremiah to buy a field, but Jeremiah was in prison. How could he buy a field? And how could he look after it? How could he grow plants or have farm animals to eat the grass? Jeremiah's cousin came to see him. I have a field to sell, he said. Would you like to buy it? This must be the field God wants me to buy, Jeremiah realised. Jeremiah paid his cousin some money. His cousin gave Jeremiah a piece of paper that said the field now belonged to Jeremiah. Jeremiah put the paper away safely. He still did not know how he was going to look after his new field. Then God said to him, One day, all my people will be free to look after their fields again. Jeremiah did not know when that day would be, but he knew that God always does what he says he will. I've never been to prison, but I can imagine that it's not the most hope-filled place, especially if the reason that you're there isn't actually a reason at all. 
Jeremiah hadn't done anything wrong, but he was still in prison. So Jeremiah wasn't really someone that had the best of luck. And sometimes we can feel like that as well, like everything's against us. But as it said in the story, whenever God promises something, he will do it. And as we've talked about before, there are so many of God pro God's promises in the Bible. Many of them say that he will look after us, he will take care of us, and he will ensure that everything works for our good. But it might not be in quite the way that we think about it. So we're going to spend some time praying together now. We're going to do some chat and catch, and we're going to talk with God about some of our hopes, some of our fears, and some other stuff too. Tell God something that's brought you joy over the last week. Tell God something that you are anxious or worried about. Tell God about someone that you're concerned for. Tell God what you'd like his help with over the coming week. There'll be lots more opportunities for us to all pray together throughout the rest of the service. And I hope that you catch something back from God that he is saying to you. But now we're all going to stand and sing in worship together to our God who keeps all of his promises and is absolutely awesome. So music group, it's over to you.
Do please be seated. Well, we were singing that the Lord will forgive us our sins, but we do have to say we're sorry, and we've come to that time now. We can't hide our sins from God, so let's confess them. The words of the confession will be on the screen, so let's say together. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. And so only God can absolve us from our sins, so we do ask, may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I do have a few notices to give, and again, mostly reminders of dates. This afternoon, in, well, five o'clock, if that's afternoon or evening, um, in here in the parish church, we have our Lost to Hope service, which is a time to remember loved ones no longer with us, but also a time to remember other losses and to think about other losses that people have suffered over the past 18 months or so, and to move forward in hope. This Wednesday is Holy Communion at 10.30 here in the parish church. And you will all, I'm sure, have um, been reminded several times that the Reverend Ben Thorndike's institution induction and installation is here on Wednesday the 8th of December at 7.30 but you do need to book by the 15th of November. So do contact Yolanda or the parish office if you want to secure a place there. I'm going to hand over in a moment, but I don't know if anyone's been looking for a needle in a haystack over the past week, because coming out of church last Sunday, someone found a little sort of trinket thing. It's so tiny, I can hardly see it. So if anyone did find a needle in the haystack and they've lost something, then we have a little trinket here. I'm now going to hand over to Joy, who has, she's only got a few minutes really to talk to us, so um, she will be available at the end of the service, and then the church wardens have a notice for us. Hello everyone. About this time of year, we let you know about the Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Gift Appeal. The good news is that we will again be collecting shoeboxes filled with gifts. These gifts bring joy and happiness into children's lives. Children who are often living in very bleak and difficult circumstances, letting them know that they are loved and not forgotten. A big thank you to all of you who took part last year. In 2020, um, the UK sent out over 265,000 shoebox gifts, and worldwide, over 9 million gifts were donated and sent. Despite all the challenges, the boxes processed in Kent last year blessed needy children in Albania, Belarus, Bosnia, Central Asia, Moldova, and Serbia. Please take a look at our website and read and watch the amazing stories of how your shoebox gifts have blessed so many children. So what can you do to help the shoebox appeal this year? Number one, pray. Firstly, and most importantly, please pray for the Operation Christmas Child appeal, that people will be moved to make up shoeboxes filled with gifts for the children. And, Pray for the children that they will be blessed by the gifts that they receive and by the opportunity to hear about Jesus and his love for them. You could make up a shoebox full of gifts. If you would like to make up a shoebox by making up a box yourself or ordering one to be made for you online, please look at our website. It's samaritans-purse.org.uk slash OCC. Details are on the leaflets I'll be handing out at the back of church at the end of the service. 
and I will leave some in the foyer if you wish to pick one up during the week. Details are also on a poster in the coffee lounge. Before starting to put a shoebox of gifts together, please check on the leaflet what's allowed because due to regulations we can't send sweets or liquids. Once you have filled a shoebox with gifts, or maybe bought some individual items to help make up a box, you can give them to me at the service on the 14th of November at St Philip's. You could drop them into the foyer of the parish church on Thursday the 18th of November between 10 and 11.30 when our lovely Stepping Stones ladies are having a packing party for Operation Christmas Child. You can drop them off at the South East Processing Centre, which this year is the John Lewis Building in Tunbridge Wells. Details and times can be found on our website. Or contact me, Joy, from now through to the second week of December via the church office. We are also always grateful to do for donations towards the cost of sending the boxes, because each box costs five pounds to send to the children. And we need volunteers in our warehouse. As with previous years, we're looking for volunteers to help check the shoebox gifts. This year, as I've said, we, our Southeast uh, Processing Centre is at John Lewis. Volunteers receive training. There are clear guidelines to help everyone know what needs to be done. And folks can book a slot to volunteer, again, via our website. There are opportunities to volunteer during the daytime and in the evening from the 22nd of November through to the 18th of December. Any questions, please come and find me at the end of the service. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, Adam and I uh, wanted to share with you some important and exciting news about reopening all of our churches for services each Sunday. We haven't been able to hold regular weekly acts of worship at all four churches for over 20 months. And as we look forward to Ben's arrival, we wish to plan now for the reopening of all of our churches from the start of 2022 and to bring people back to worshipping in person. The arrangements that we're about to set out follow after prayer and discussions with Ben and Wendy, and also draw on the feedback received from the Living Questions consultation in 2020, and the parish needs that were described in the profile used to recruit Ben. These arrangements were discussed by the PCC in October and unanimously supported by one abstention. They represent a change from how we went about things pre-pandemic, but offer real opportunity to grow our life and ministry together post-pandemic. From the start of 2022, on Sundays, services at St. Andrew's and St. Saviour's will begin at 9.15 a.m. Services at St. Philip's and at PNP will begin at 10.45 a.m. We will live stream the 10.45 a.m. from PMP via YouTube. Children's groups will also be, will be back running each Sunday. Holy Communion will be celebrated at each church on a monthly basis. We will continue with an early 8 a.m. communion each Sunday, but this will be at PMP rather than St. Saviour's. The evening service will be held at 6 p.m., also at PMP. As I say, these are the arrangements for Sundays. The midweek 10.30 a.m. Wednesday communion will continue at PMP. We expect that this will be on a monthly basis, so please look out for further updates in our newsletter and on the website about services held on other days of the week. Thank you for your support, and do pray for the ministry, mission, and unity of our parish. Thank you.
And many thanks to the wardens and to Ben and Wendy because there's been a lot of uh, prayerful discussion uh, behind those proposals. So let's just pray now, shall we? We give thanks, Heavenly Father, for the wonderful opportunity afforded by our four churches for us to gather to worship you in fellowship with one another. May we be excited by change and challenge and united as a parish to work as one to enable your kingdom to grow in this place. This we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing again in a moment, and after which uh, Patricia will bring our reading and Felicity will open God's word to us. So let's stand to sing. Come people of the risen King. reading is from Romans chapter 12 starting at verse 9 through to verse 16 love love must be sincere hate what is evil cling to what is good be devoted to one another in brotherly love honor one another above yourselves never be lacking in zeal but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. 
Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. This is the last talk in the Holy Habits series where with Jesus as a role model, we consider the holy habits which Christians should develop. And this passage, read so beautifully by Patricia just now, is written by Paul, who was a follower of Jesus, to the Christians in Rome. It sums up all of Jesus' holy habits, which we're called to follow, and they all have their root in love. But it's a huge list of about 18 do's and don'ts, and it's very daunting. My reaction might be, not another list of challenging things I must do. But we're not being asked to do this in our own strength or to go beyond our skill set. If we pray and read the Bible, we can find out how God plans to use each one of us with the skills he's given us. God wants us to use, God wants to use us to be his comfort in this world, to be his hope givers. So let's pray before we continue. Father, help us to be blessed by your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the title of this text in my Bible is Love in Action. And it can be summed up by the commandments that Jesus described as being the greatest. And can anyone tell me what the two greatest commandments are according to Jesus? Love the Lord your God with all your and all your soul and all your mind. And who else must we love? Our neighbours as ourselves. Great, thank you. So let's see if we can find evidence of the two great commandments in this Bible passage. So Jeremy, could we have the text on the screen because I'm aware you haven't got Bibles. All right, so we can see that there are verses about loving God with all your heart, which is verse 11. Is it on there? Yes. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, and fervour means enthusiasm, serving the Lord. So that's loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And there are several verses about loving our neighbour, loving others, like verse 10, it's not marked there, but be devoted to one another, there you are, the second line, be devoted to one another in love. And devoted is a really powerful word for committing yourself to care for others. So come on, can you see any others in there? Just say them out. Thank you. Yes, share with the Lord's people. Thank you. Another one, please, showing that we're, good, we're being asked to love our neighbour. Love one another. Thank you. Another one? Hospitality. Practice hospitality. Thank you, Devon. And honour one another. I think that's actually what Jenny said. Another one? Share. Who said share? That was a good one. Thank you. Um... What about mourn with those who mourn? And also, um, Sally alluded to this, living in harmony, live in harmony, live in unity with one another. And the last one. Do not be, do not be proud, do not be conceited. Yeah, thank you. That wasn't so difficult, was it? Thank you. So this is what we're called to do but no one's saying it's easy. But we do try our hardest to do this because Jesus asks us to, and we obey 
because we know how much Jesus loves us. And Jesus showed how much he loves us by coming to earth and suffering rejection and pain and death so that we could be saved. So we're being asked here to keep the two greatest commandments. And if we do this, we're showing we love Jesus and we become love givers and hope givers to others. And the marvellous thing is that as people experience the love of Jesus through what we do, they're comforted and they want to find out more about him. So God made us all to be hope givers and love givers, but he gave each one of us different skills, different ways of doing things. And this thought about what's under the tablecloth there came to me as I was thinking about the superb cream tea served by Caroline Buck and team on Thursday more than 450 pounds. Well done. Well done. Tea and the teapots it is served in stand for comfort and hope in my book. Tea is the classic British response to a crisis. So who watches Corrie? Who watches Coronation Street? Go on, you can own up. You're with friends here. Nobody, neither do I, but I'm told that when someone turns up on their friend's doorstep in shock or in tears, wanting comfort, the friend always says, anyone know? Put the kettle on or fancy coming in for a brew, absolutely. So it must be right. So the teapot stands for care and comfort and how we obey Jesus and love our neighbours. And we all have different ways of showing we care about others, thank you, Sally. I didn't trust myself to take the tablecloth off without knocking the teapots on the ground. <laughs> there we go. And children, I think you've got something in your sheet with a teapot on it, haven't you? All right, Sally, so could you point, please, Sally, to the small teapot? Or oh, lift it up, lovely. So, some of us are great at one-on-one -on -one situations, listening in a small with a small group, in a small group, or just with one other person. So that's the small teapot. You may be like that. You could be other teapots as well. The white teapot, Sally. And some of us are good at showing hospitality to many and introducing people to each other, making them feel included in the group. It's horrible to feel outside of a group, isn't it? And the antique teapot, careful Sally, that's 200 years old that one is, <laughs> never gets used. <laughs> Some of us have been around for a while and are gifted in sharing knowledge and wisdom gained through experience. The glass cafetiere, I'm cheating a bit here Sally, because um, coffee can be comforting as well. Some of us are like a breath of fresh air. We tell it how it is. What you see is what you get. There are no hidden agendas, and people know where they stand with you. So if they come and ask you for advice, they know that what you say to them is the truth. And the silver teapot, given to my grandfather in 1939. Some of us, and I polished that last night, it hadn't been polished for a couple of years. Some of us shine so brightly with joy in Jesus that we make people smile just by being there. Or we're good at telling jokes. So I'd like you to think about what sort of teapot you are. If you were a teapot, what would you be like? I might not have mentioned all of them, it's just those are the only pots I've got. What are the skills God gave you to reach out to others in love, to be a hope giver? You might just be good at making tea, like Caroline, and making cakes. Children, maybe you can draw the sort of teapot you are. And the rest of you, we're all children anyway, aren't we? Just take a moment to look and think which type of teapot or a joy giver you are. So just take a moment, think about that.
and you might want to think on about that on other days as well. It takes a while to work out what you think you're really good at. So once we've discovered our gifting, we can develop the skills we've discovered that God has given us and ask him for ways of using them by praying and by reading the Bible. Maybe we can keep a copy of this text by our bedside or wherever we pray to remind us of what we need to do to truly love others. But as I've said before, this will not always be easy because verse 9 said, love must be sincere, a bit like the cafetiere, what you see is what you get. But it's hard sometimes to tell people the truth when it's not what they want to hear. And as Andy said, the Old Testament prophets like Jeremiah discovered that. And verse 14 said, that was right near the end, bless those who persecute you. Oh. We're not asked to be rude to someone who is annoying us. We're not asked to shake our fist to someone who's just cut us up driving along the road. Quite the opposite. We're asked to bless them. It's not always easy. But don't forget that Jesus knew it would be hard. That's why when he had ascended into heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to be a helper and a comforter. He will help us to pray and ask God for guidance. So the holy habits of Jesus, which Christians are called to follow, are summed up in the two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind and love your neighbour as yourself. And we each have special gifts, different ways of showing love and care to others and we ask God to help us develop them. And sometimes it's difficult to love sincerely and to love the unlovely, but we try our hardest to keep at it so that others will know by our actions that we love Jesus and we want to know more about him. So let's just pray. Heavenly Father, help us to develop the special skills you have given us so that by the way we care for others, they may know your love for them. Amen. And before we say the creed, I'd like you to listen to a little song which is all about the greatest commandments. Thank you, Jeremy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind And love your neighbor as yourself Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind And love your neighbor as yourself Let us be known, let us be known By the way we love By the way we love Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind And love your neighbor as yourself Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind
whatever gifting we've got to offer and we know we can offer our love and we can declare our faith together as well with uh, our sisters and brothers all over the world. So if you're able, do let's stand to affirm our faith. And if you respond in the bold type. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So do please be seated as Andy comes to lead our prayers. For our prayers this morning, we will be using three circles. And uh, if you have some paper and a pen, maybe an activity sheet, uh, you may want to draw these circles on. If you don't have something to write and draw with, you can use your imagination. So first of all, we're going to start with a fairly small circle. And in this circle, we are going to be praying for... Uh, not just ourselves, but those who are closest to us. Maybe our family, our work colleagues, our closest friends. Anything and everything we want to pray for. So I'm going to give you some time and space to pray for them. If you'd like to write their names down, either imaginary in your head or actually on your paper, then please do. Lord God, we pray for those who are nearest and dearest to us, that we see with regularity or who are close to our hearts. We pray for all that they are going through, whether good or bad. We thank you that you are with them, and we pray that they would know you more. Amen. Now we're going to draw a slightly bigger circle. And in that circle... We're going to think about those in our wider communities, maybe our church fellowship, our neighborhoods, our town, um, even our country. So let's pray for our wider communities. Lord God, we thank you that you created us to be in community with others and you. We pray for those many communities that we are part of, for our parish family, for our neighborhoods, for our towns, for our country. We pray for all that we are going through both individually and corporately, and that we would always be seeking after you and your kingdom. Amen. And now our final circle is even bigger still. And this circle will help us to pray for uh, the largest scale we can possibly think of. Not just our nation, but other nations, the continent that we are part of, and the whole world. So let's pray. God, we thank you for all you have so lovingly made. We pray that we and all of your people would be able to look after and safeguard your creation. Whether it's people, other animals, the natural world beyond ourselves, whatever it may be. Father, we pray that you would give us the ability, the courage, 
and the drive to do all that is necessary in your name to safeguard what you have made. Amen. And so now we draw all of our prayers together, whether said or unsaid, in the words of the Lord's Prayer. So we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And as we come towards the end of our service, I hope all that talk about teapots and cafeterias has made you thirsty for God, but it may have made you thirsty in a physical sense as well. So do please stay for coffee afterwards. And you at home will have to go and put your own kettles on in a moment. So, um. But thank you to everyone who's been involved in this service, those that you can see obviously up front and those that you can't see because there's a lot of work goes on behind the scenes too. So if you're comfortable to do so, let's stand for our final hymn. O oh God, beyond all praising. before our final blessing let's join together in a closing prayer let's say together father of lights from whom comes every good and perfect gift keep us in the light of Christ to shine in your world that all may believe in you through Jesus Christ our Lord amen so may the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself and the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service and the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all, those we love and those we pray for now and always. Amen. And thank you everyone both here and at home for joining with us this morning. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord.